So let me share my screen once again. So guys, uh, we were discussing about, I was discussing about DMVP and how it works. So I told you this is the important protocol that is going to be participating in uh, DMVP, dynamic multipoint VPN. One is NHRP and MGRE. MGRE. So Hub maintains uh, NHRP database of all the spokes. That is the real IP addresses. Each spoke registers its real address when it boots. Spokes query NHRP database for real address of destination. Multipoint GRE tunnel interface allows single GRE interface to support multiple IPsec tunnels, simplifies size and complexity of the configuration. So remember the key points. Always remember when we talk about DMVP and remember about the three protocols, IPsec, MGRE and NHR. Always remember that folks have a permanent IPsec tunnel to the hub. See, my last session also I told you it is very difficult to use static routes. So we'll be using dynamic routing protocol. If you are using dynamic routing protocol, we need to see that the tunnel is continuously up between the hub and the spoke. That is the GRE tunnel has to be up. One side to side tunnel also should be up between the hub and spoke. Okay. So one permanent tunnel to the hub, but between spokes, there won't be tunnel. So now you must be thinking how I'm going to send the traffic from one spoke to another spoke. It is instant. Like, you know, if, if I want to send something from one spoke to another spoke, I will initiate that tunnel at that particular moment. And once the job is done, it will get terminated. Always remember, tunnel should never be on for longer time. Why? Because it's not good. It's not safe. But yes, in case of hub and spoke, always the permanent tunnel, IPsec tunnel will be there. When a spoke need to send a packet to the destination that is private subnet or another spoke, he has to carry the NHRP server for the real. And remember, this is not static. It is dynamic in nature. That means anytime, I gave you an example of just that. Anytime if the shop changes the address, he has to inform just dial about the new address so that they get the correct information they update their database with the correct information and when somebody asks for the address they will give the correct address like you know if you change the residence or if you change your mobile number you always inform your bank you always inform the important places where you are connected otherwise what will happen if you don't inform them about your new resident new address or current address your all your correspondence, all your letters, all your uh, you know, couriers will go to the wrong address, old address. So whenever you change your address, you always inform, always update in the database. Whenever you change your mobile number, you always you know, send a message to all your friends and uh, especially where you are attached with this mobile number because nowadays many uh, in many cases. The verification is done through mobile. So many times they, they even ask you, you know, the, the caller asks you, if you are calling from the registered mobile number. If you are calling from some other mobile number, he will ask for multiple other verifications. Otherwise, he won't ask. He will just check, okay, you are calling from so-and-so number. This is registered with us and it is mapped with the policy. So he will not uh, do any other queries. Okay. When a spoke needs to send a packet to the destination subnet or where is NHRP server for real address. Now the originating spoke can initiate a dynamic IPsec tunnel to the target spoke because he knows the peer address. So if 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 any spoke queries the hub NHRP server, he will immediately refer to the table. Okay, now the originating spoke can initiate a dynamic IPsec tunnel to the target spoke. These are the protocols which are supported in hub to spoke and spoke to spoke topology. 
in DMPPL. This is the advantage you're going to get if you are just doing IPsec GRE. All traffic must always go via hub only. But in DMVPN, you can send via hub, you can send it via spoke to spoke also. Both the options are available hub to spoke and spoke to spoke. Easy to deploy. DMVPN is also easy. IPsec plus GRE is also. In IPsec, the configuration is very lengthy. For every side to side, you will be having a lengthy configuration. But in case of DMVPN, it is less configuration on the hub side. Okay, and on the spoke side also, you have very limited configuration. You don't have to build side to side tunnel between every spoke. You have to just build a side to side tunnel between hub and spoke, that's all. So these are some of the benefits you're going to get, okay? So let me just uh, start. Uh, see, this is my topology, which we are going to do today as a practical. You can see in this topology, we have R1 here. Now this R1 is having one LAN. R1 is going to act as a hub router. R1 is going to act as a NHRP server. So my R1 is an important router. He's acting like a hub. He's also acting like an NHRP server. So see, NHRP server, so whenever R3 boots, he will register it with the NHRP server. That was, this is my tunnel IP address. And he will also give what? His public IP address. That you can see in a NHRP database. R4, when it registers himself to NHRP server, say by my tunnel IP is this, my public IP address is this. So see, after some time you will see, R1 will have all the networks due to EIGRP or OSPF as a dynamic routing protocol running between R1 and R3, R1 and R4 and R1 and R5. R2 is just an ISP router. So we are not going to run anything here. So we are going to form an, a GRE tunnel between R1, R2, R3, R, sorry, R1, R3, R1, R4 and R1, R5. GRE. The private network is 30, 40 and 50. 10, 30 and 40 and 50. So if you are running EIGRP between R1 and R3, you will see he got 30, he got 40, he got 50, and this fellow got 10, 40, and 50, this fellow got 10, 30, and 50. So let's start practical. 192, 168, 152.158. Same. Wipe. Start. Let me just check uh, the consoles of routers. Let it be let it start.
So this is my internet. Good. So I got my configuration back. I said wipe and start. I said wipe, then start. <coughs> So my initial basic configuration is done. So R3 is also S1 by 0, S1 by 0, S1. Yes. Already have a configuration with us, but not a big deal.
copy. I'm doing the configuration, so I'm silent. R3. This will be, I think, E0. Copy. R4. Also configure R5. So I am able to ping R3, I am able to ping R4, I am able to ping R5 from ISP. So I will save this configuration. From R3, I can ping ISP router, I can ping head office. From R4 router, I can ping head office. From R5 router, I can ping head office. So reachability is there. Okay. Let me export this configuration. Export all configuration. R1 R2 Perfect. Okay. So now what we'll do? I will write down the IP address of tunnel zero. What is the IP address? 10.1.1.1. X. Channel 0. 10.1.1.1. Bold. Blue. Okay. I'll make a duplicate. Place it here. This will be 10.1.1.3 as per the router number. Duplicate. This will be 10.1.1.4. 
four. Three, four, and five. This is my public IP address. Twenty three dot one dot one dot one. This is my public IP address. Twenty four. This is my public IP address. Twenty five. So you see 23, 24, and 25, that is public IP address, or you can say NBMA address. This is 12.1.1.2. This is 12.1.1.1. Tunnel IP addresses will be the private IP address, okay? You'll be having a, a separate LAN behind R3, R4, and R5. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, add a node. It's going to act as a LAN. PC four. Then Just connect that to all the devices. So once again, I started, I hope you understood the diagram. 
I don't need this. I need this. Three. I need four. I need five. One. Twenty three dot one dot one dot one. Twenty four dot one dot one dot one. Twenty five dot one dot one dot ten. So my um, all my spokes are reachable. Now I'll do what? I'll run EIGS. Say ten, and I'll advertise my network. Okay, I won't advertise my twelve network. Because I have already given a route pointing towards, but I will advertise. So if you see show run pipe section router, I have advertised my network. 